Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. So House of the Dragon episode 10 had leaked, right? I refused to watch the leak, but I kept seeing people saying it sucked. It was so bad. And then I see it and it's absolute fire. So I was like, like it went crazy. So I just, I don't understand. So I'm going to break this down as only I can break this down. So overall, the episode was like, a nine. Like I got a few complaints, but mostly I loved the finale. One of the biggest things people are mad about is the dragon fight over Storm's End and how Vagar didn't listen to Aemon and Arax didn't listen to Luke. And people were saying this contradicts with the known dragon lore and that's just not factual because Zadrias Buzdari Ixos Dior. A dragon is not a slave. And we will get into this when we get there, but I have proof that the dragons are not as controlled as you think. But let's go in order. So the episode starts out at Dragonstone. Luke is at the painted table focused on Driftmark. Luke doesn't want to be Lord of Driftmark. Like he just, he's a sweet kid and he's really hard on himself. Like his granddaddy was the sea snake and that's some big shoes to fill. So his mother comforts him and tells him she too was afraid when Viserys named her his heir. But this sweet moment between mother and son is interrupted because Rhaenys has arrived from King's Landing, honey. And Rainey's brought with her the tea and it's piping hot. And she spills the tea with no sugar, no cream, no nothing. She's just like, Viserys is dead. And Rainier and Damon seem a little like sus when it comes to the information because they don't really understand how she's still alive. But she explains that she saw them crown Aegon in the dragon pit before she fled on Maylees. And people were mad as fuck that she didn't burn the greens last week when she had the chance to do it. But Damon is mad about that shit too. But Rainey simply says, you know, it's not my war to start. And I feel like that's actually a good reason. Like you don't, like she doesn't want to start a war. No one does. The Like what you see in both episodes nine and 10 is people doing all this treasonous shit and expecting to avoid a war. Like what? Everyone knows war is coming. But no one wants to be the one that starts it. No one wants to be the one responsible for plunging the realms of men into war. But anyway, this news that Aegon is now king, has been crowned king, they've usurped the throne, her father is dead, this news sends Rhaenyra into labor. Rhaenyra goes to birth the baby while Damon secures Dragonstone. Luke and Jace are fighting on the beaches of Dragonstone. Jace reminds me a lot of Jon Snow for some reason. I don't know why, but yeah, Jon Snow vibes. But anyway, Rhaenys interrupts them to go to Rhaenyra. Go to your mother. Your mother needs you. She gives them the news, right? So Rhaenyra gives them the news and she's they're like, where's Damon? And she's like, I don't know, going to madness, plotting his war. But Rhaenyra takes this opportunity to remind Jace that he is her heir and she tells him nothing is to be done but by her command. So around the painted table at Dragonstone, the men are plotting while Rhaenyra is screaming from the pain of childbirth. Rhaenyra is actually screaming for him like she's screaming for Damon, and he's like, nah, 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 I'm good. First this. And people were like, why would they portray Damon like this? Like, listen. No one loves Damon more than I do, but it's not because he's some Edward Cullen type of character that's going to rescue Bella. Like, Damon is a warrior with a soft heart towards those he loves, but he's a violent man. He's militant. He's one of the most interesting Targaryens in 300 years of history and lore, but bro, he's violent. It's Damon fucking Targaryen. Anyway, Jay storms into the chamber of the painted table and gives his mother's command, and Damon's just like, yeah. Bro, send them ravens anyway. <laughs> and he does. Which, I'm on Damon's side. Like, he's not doing anything but making sure Dragonstone is secure and making sure they're safe and sending ravens to people. So he tells Jace to go with him so he can show him the true meaning of loyalty. He calls the King's Guard to the Dragonmont and my little COVID boy comes out. My Carax, he's my little bow-legged throat goat. I swear... For Caraxes is like one of my favorite dragons at this point. Like it just is what it is. Basically, Damon reminds them of the oaths they swore to their king and who 
the king chose to succeed him. He offers them a clean death if they want to support Aegon or a painful one of fire if they turn their cloak. Um, so real loyalty comes from fear and Damon knows this. Damon definitely believes in House of the Dragon. Remember what he told Viserys? Fuck what some lord thinks. You are the dragon. But anyway, during this time, Rhaenyra is giving birth and you can see Cyrax feeling her pain. The bond between dragon and dragon rider is unexplainable. It's otherworldly. And I have a whole video coming out on dragons and dragon bonds and dragon lore. But it is her dragon bond that causes Cyrax to feel her emotions. It's almost like a warg bond. It's also not a coincidence that Cyrax laid a clutch of eggs while Rhaenyra was pregnant. But we see the baby. It's a girl. It's missing a leg. It's badly deformed. And it looks like... It could possibly be scaly, scaly like a lizard, or that could just be placenta and juice and some other stuff. Anyway, this scene is lifted directly from Fire and Blood, especially the echoes of her screams through Sea Dragon Tower, which Sea Dragon Tower is that tower that they're in on Dragonstone. In Fire and Blood, Rhaenyra is due like in a month when she goes into labor and Rhaenyra has a daughter, Visenya, and this is how the baby is described. A stillborn girl, twisted and malformed, with, with a hole where her heart should have been, and a stubby scaled tail. Rhaenyra says, she was my only daughter and they killed her. They stole my crown and murdered my daughter and they shall answer for it. I think they're going to probably retcon that line for Luke's death. Rhaenyra and Daemon are both upset. They have the traditional Targaryen funeral by fire cremation for their daughter. And Eric Cargyle arrives with a crown. He has stolen Viserys' crown from King's Landing and brought it to the rightful queen Rhaenyra. Damon crowns Rhaenyra and kneels first and calls her his queen. Like, I was getting teary-eyed because, bro, she is the rightful queen. The Greens are just, like, traitors and usurpers. Like, the Greens tried to do that whole grand coronation, Aegon's crown, Aegon's sword thing, because they want to convince people that Aegon's king. He needs signs of legitimacy because he's not legitimate. And Rhaenyra, being the legitimate heir, being crowned privately on Dragonstone, doesn't need to convince anyone else anything because she is legitimate but princess rainies is watching she's watching and i think she likes what she sees so we get some of the most beautiful shots of the painted table the painted table was made by Aegon the conqueror and it, and it this is the light up version anyway so they place candles under the table and it lights up and this is the Black Council. I liked her walk to the chamber of the painted table. The guards on her side. Damon announcing her. Reyna being her cupbearer. Bela and Reyna being at her side. I liked this scene. I loved when Damon announced her and they have their first pre-war council. And they are talking about three of their potential allies based on the oaths that were swore to Rhaenyra back in episode one. So those potential allies are House Baratheon, House Stark, and House Aaron. Those are the three houses that band together during Robert's rebellion to end the Targaryen dynasty and place Bobby B on the throne. But anyway, anyway, they start talking about the dragons because Lord Barnabas was like, why are we worrying about these houses and their soldiers and their men when y'all got dragons? And Rhaenyra's like, yeah, bro, but the Greens have dragons too. So the Greens have four dragons in the books because Viserys and Alicent have another son that's currently in Old Town named Daron. George R.R. R. Martin confirmed that he's in Old Town. He is on the show and HBO officially added him to the Targaryen family tree. So technically they have four dragons, Vagar, Sunfire, Dreamfire, and Tessarion. And the Blacks have Caraxes, Cyrax, Meles, Vermax, Arax, Tyraxes, and Moondancer. Sea Smoke is on Driftmark and there's also Vermithor and Silverwing plus the Wild Dragons. This meeting though is interrupted by the arrival of Sir Otto Hightower. Otto has the nerve to come to Dragonstone talking about he's there for King Aegon the second of his name and just like the audacity of it all is just 
the audacity. So Rhaenyra pulls up on Cyrax. Otto also has the audacity to call her princess. I mean, she's the queen. Like when she corrected him, like I'm Queen Rhaenyra now. I was like, yes, queen. So Sir Otto gives them Aegon's terms. And the terms of Aegon's uh, generous offer are whack. Like they're absolutely whack. But Damon comes through and gives Sir Otto a reality check. He's like, I'd feed my sons to the dragons before they carry cups and shields for your spawn. Damon is seething with anger. I don't know if y'all picked it up, but he can't even keep still. Like before Otto gets up to him on the bridge, Damon's like pacing back and forth. He wants to kill him real bad. Otto has the audacity to say... Aegon has been the heir and you and your father you're the last ones to know and it's a shame and I'm just like no he didn't. Rhaenyra threw his hand of the pen pendant in the sea and called him a traitor and I'm just like that's it that's all we gonna do we not gonna feed him to Cyrax we not gonna throw him off the bridge that's just throw it the pen in the water okay so then Otto gives her a page out of a book from episode one. So Allison hasn't forgotten the love y'all used to share. And people was like, oh, Allison kept that page all this time. And me personally, I was like, fuck her and that page. And Damon did too. Damon wants to kill him. Rhaenyra says no though. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Really? We not? Like, I feel like they're out of their mind not to kill him or at least imprison him. He's committing high treason in your face. Like you're really, like he's really in your face. And Rhaenyra doesn't, but Rhaenyra's trying to avoid war. Rhaenyra doesn't want to be queen of the ashes. And Damon says, that's your father talking. And Damon and Rhaenyra get into an argument. And everybody was like, oh my God, Damon choked Rhaenyra. I don't know how people are shocked by this. Like, Damon is a violent man. He killed his first wife. Damon is reacting with anger emotionally. He's just learned that for Viserys is dead. His daughter's just died. Uh, his wife's throne has just been usurped. Uh, Otto, you just let Otto just leave Dragonstone untouched. Like, And then on top of all that, he finds out Viserys never trusted him to tell him about the A Song of Ice and Fire prophecy. And he's seeing, so there's that, but he's also seeing that Rhaenyra is making the same mistakes her father did when it came to Sir Otto. And Rhaenyra is not listening to his counsel and his advice and he's trying to do what's best for her. And I think like it, it's like he just couldn't, like he's violent. And that's how he fucking reacted violently. He's not like a good person. He's a good character. For me, Damon is an old school Targaryen. He's like a Visenya Targaryen. Like he knows that fire and blood is their house words for a reason. So Rhaenys catches Corlys up to speed on the goings and comings since he's been gone. Corlys wants to declare for no one, but it's Rhaenys that speaks for Rhaenyra and her grandchildren. And the next day, Corlys comes to choose a side, and he chooses Rhaenyra. So now she has the Valerian fleet, and Corlys is going to stop all the trade from being able to get into King's Landing, so King's Landing is going to, like, starve and shit. Anyway, Rhaenys is going to patrol the Blackwater on Maylees, but it is also decided that Jace and Luke will deliver messages to Storm's End, Winterfell, and the Eyrie. So Rhaenyra makes them swear that they are only going as messengers. They're not knights. They're not warriors. Messengers. Jace is going to take the longer journey because he's older. Jace will first go to the Eyrie. Um... Rhaenyra's mother was Aima Arryn. She was the daughter of Dela Targaryen and Roderick Arryn. So it's likely they will side with Rhaenyra. So she's their blood. Also, the ruler of the Vale is a woman, so she's likely to support the woman's claim to the throne. But Jace will also be going to Winterfell to treat with Cragen Stark. So this is where shit gets real interesting with Jace because there's rumors of Vermax laying dragon eggs in the crypts of Winterfell and secret weirwood wedding. Like, it's juicy up in the north. It's going to be juicy up in the north in season two. And I'm currently writing a video on Jace. So Luke is taking the shorter flight, right? 
the easier flight. He's 14, so he's going to Storm's End. House Baratheon is loyal to House Targaryen. Rhaenys' mother is actually Jocelyn Baratheon. So Rhaenyra expects Luke to be welcomed warmly at Storm's End. But ironically, that's not going to happen. But before we go on to Storm's End, let's talk about this. One of my favorite moments, one of my favorite parts of this episode was seeing Vermithor. Vermithor is the old king's dragon. He is King Jaehaerys' dragon. Damon pulls up singing a song in High Valyrian to get to see Vermithor, to get Vermithor to come out. So the song lyrics are crazy. So someone had translated the song lyrics from High Valyrian and the song lyrics are crazy. I'm not going to repeat them all here because it's kind of long, but I probably will talk about it in my dragon video, but it definitely sounds like some three-headed prophecy, magical type shit going on. Like three-headed dragon type shit. But Vermithor is huge. I don't know, y'all. I feel like this scene is super important, but I can't figure out why. Um, if you do slow it down, though, and you look at Damon's eye, it looks like he's warging. Like, it looks like he's legit warging or doing some kind of magical shit in this moment. His eye looks really weird. Anyway, Storm's End. Okay, so I must be a craven because as soon as I seen Vagar big ass goblet neck ass in the castle yard, I would have been the fuck out of there. He was brave. He went in there knowing if Vagar was in the yard, Eamon was in the castle. First of all, I would like to give a big fuck you, you illiterate bitch to Lord Boros traitor ass. Um, he can't read. First of all, he cannot read. He's illiterate. So that's why he's like, where is the maester? But also, I kind of understand why Boros chooses green. Eamon is offering to marry one of his daughters in exchange for Baratheon swords. And Rhaenyra is offering nothing. Eamon tries to collect Luke's eye and Boros stops him. And we finally get Eamon's sapphire eye like Eamon. And Eamon wants to take Alicent Luke's eye eye and Boros stops him and we but Eamon wants to take Alicent Luke's eye so let's talk about it let's talk about the dragons real quick so Luke and Arax are literally running to each other go back and watch it they are running to each other Arax hobbles towards Luke and bends down for him to get on Arax is like we got to get the fuck out of this raggedy stormy ass castle but actually what's going on is the dragons they have like this warging type of bond where they feel the person they are bonded with emotions as we see earlier in the episode with Cyrax while Rhaenyra is giving birth as we see with Damon and Caraxes when Damon take the arrow Caraxes yelled and I think it was episode three four Arax felt the fear in Luke Luke tells him in Valyrian to be calm and to focus and to serve him and to listen and they leave and one of the craziest shots of this whole series is Vagar flying over Arax and Luke. You get to really see and appreciate just how big Vagar is. Like, that's a big dragon. Now, I know a lot of people don't like how the scene played out, but I actually liked it. Aemon is not trying to kill Luke, right? The whole thing is accidental. So, Arax is flying trying to get away from Vagar. Arax could, on any normal day, get away from Vagar because Vagar is so big she can't turn quick and all that shit that Arax does. But it's raining and Aemon is chasing Luke and Arax through the storm. So Arax decides, I'm tired of this old bitch chasing us. I'm about to Dracarys her right in the eye so she can be one-eyed just like that 1738 motherfucker that's riding her. I'm joking, but Arax was scared, bro. Like, he was scared, and without a command, he shot fire at Vagar. And Vagar took that personally, and without a command, broke Arax and Luke to pieces. Luke was telling Arax no. Aemon was telling Vagar no. But the dragons did what they did on their own, and people were mad. But that's basically what the lore says. If you actually think about it, 
Daenerys tells the slavers of Astapor, a dragon is not a slave. In Westeros, in this universe, a dragon is a really in- intelligent being, a different kind of intelligence, a magical intelligence, something beyond understanding. But dragons have free will. In the books, Drogon takes Daenerys wherever he wants to take her. She would sooner have returned to Marine on Dragon's Wing, to be sure, but that was a desire Drogon did not seem to share. The Dragon Lords of Old Valyria had controlled their mounts with binding spells and sorcerous horns. Daenerys made do with a word and a whip. Mounted on the dragon's back, she all felt as if she were learning to ride all over again. When she whipped her silver mare on her right flank, the mare went left. For a horse's first instinct is to flee from danger. When she laid the whip across Drogon's right side, he veered right. For a dragon's first instinct is always to attack. Sometimes it did not seem to matter where she struck him, though. Sometimes he went where he would and took her with him. Neither whip nor words could turn Drogon if he did not wish to be turned. Then you also have the story about Arya Targaryen and Beleriand. She fled on her dragon at 14 years old and everyone was wondering where she went and what happened to her for like a year and some change. Septon Barth says this, Whatever her plans, it did not matter. It's one thing to leap upon a dragon and quite another to bend him to your will, particularly a beast as old and fierce as the Black Dread. From the very start, we have asked, where did Araya take Beleriand? We should have been asking, where did Beleriand take Araya? The idea is that Beleriand was the oldest dragon and the only dragon to have been to Valyria before the Doom. So, Beleriand took her to Valyria. I don't even want to tell you what happened to Araya when Beleriand finally brought her back to King's Landing, but you should probably not read it. It's creepy. Anyway, so we also have an example of Silverwing, Queen Alicent's dragon, refusing to fly past the wall. Even in this season of House of the Dragon, the very first episode, Viserys says the idea that we control dragons is an illusion. We see Lena give Vagar the Jakaris command several times, but she wouldn't do it. When Vagar finally did burn Lena, there was no command given. There was no command. She just did it because she felt her pain. So yeah, a dragon is not a slave. Now people were like, this makes Aemon's character suck. And I'm just like, bro, no, it does not. Because it never says he did it on purpose in the books, right? We don't know if he did it on purpose. The only people in the sky were him and Luke. And Luke is dead. So the only person alive to tell the story is Aemon. The thing is, no matter what, even though the dragon disobeyed Aemon and Aemon didn't want Luke to die... Aemon is still responsible for his death. A dragon is not a toy. A dragon is a weapon of mass destruction. You don't play hide and go seek on a dragon to scare Luke. You scared him enough already in the damn castle. Leave him alone. So you should have never like put yourself in that situation where you could or your dragon could kill him. So yes, you're childish and immature and your bullying killed him. Now, I think the situation makes Aemon a lot more gray. Because he didn't mean to kill him. He probably didn't think his dragon was going to kill him. It's, it's kind of like a Jamie Lannister thing for me. Like, I feel like Aemon's going to be like Jamie in, a, in, in one big way. So, Aemon is never going to admit that he was just toying with Luke and lost control of Vagar. Like, I bet a million dollars. Like, that's not going to happen. Um, Aemon's never going to admit that. Like, he's not going to mi- admit that Vagar killed Luke on accident. Eamon is never going to explain what happened. He's going to completely own the Kinslayer title. I say this reminds me of Jamie because Jamie killed Ares on purpose, but he killed him because Ares was about to blow up King's Landing with wildfire. But Jamie owned the title Kingslayer, Oathbreaker, Man Without Honor, because he never explained his side of the story. He never told the truth to anyone until he told Brienne at Harrenhal. So I think something similar might go down, might happen with Aemond. Um, He's never going to explain it was an accident. Never. 
I, I'm willing to bet like my unborn kid on it at this point. So then we see Rhaenyra getting the news that her son is dead. Her sweet, sweet, sweet Lucaris is dead. And she gets that news from Damon. And you will see no more restraint from Rhaenyra in season two. And I loved this episode. I thought it was amazing and I cannot wait for season two. I'm actually really, 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 really excited to see Winterfell and the things that are going to go down with Jace. And I'll have a lot of videos coming out on House of the Dragon stuff, what to expect, season two, Winterfell, dragons, all kinds of shit. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the sweet summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.